There is no example, whether it is in a university or a country, of the left being in charge and allowing dissent. There is no example. They, they must suppress truth because they cannot survive a challenge. That's why they don't want a Charlie Kirk in San Jose State tomorrow. They, they fear correctly that 90 minutes of Charlie will undo four years of what they have called. <laughs> spend the hour here telling you what the Guardian and the New York Times and the Washington Post and the LA Times and Daily Codes have written about, and PBS and NPR have written about PragerU. Do you know, I'll give you one example, and this is part of this culture issue, and I know I'm going beyond a minute, forgive me. Uh, <laughs> I can take your minute like as a compliment. No, it's okay. I, I heard it. I heard it. Uh, so, they list some of the uh, videos that we put out for kids. We put out videos for adults as well. Most of them are for adults, but we put out for kids. And almost every one that has attacked us has cited the, a video titled, How to Fold an American Flag. The left finds that obscene that we tell kids to respect the flag and this is how it is folded. The fact that they use that as an example of how awful PragerU is gives you an idea of where their values are. They also lie. Many of them say, oh, and they also put out a video, this is not for kids, one of our regular videos, uh, about did slavery cause the Civil War? They never watched the video. The entire point of the video, given by a West Point professor of history, by the way, is that slavery was the cause of the Civil War. They only read the title. <laughs> and assuming we're conservative, deny that slavery was the ultimate cause of the Civil War because truth is not a left-wing value. How do you fight this? You fight it by fighting. Okay? There are good, good people are divided into three groups. I've said this a thousand times, this is 1,001. Good people are divided into those who fight, those who do nothing, and those who help the fighters. Do, those who do nothing is the largest of the group of nice, fine people. You have to either fight or help the fighters. Helping the fighters is as important as fighting. Because without supplies, Charlie gets supply, Prager U does, and, and, and Talk Radio. Talk Radio is the original fighter for the United States of America. I would, I would say you look at a whole group of fighters here, Dennis. A whole group of fighters. Charlie? Fighters. I, I, I'm just going to talk about one of the main things. The biggest attack vector against the trans mafia and the alphabet jihadis is medical malpractice lawsuits. And so if you are an attorney or you know it, this is a major attack vector and it's already being exploited. Now, I don't know how it's going to happen in California, but the fact that it's becoming a sanctuary state, these quote unquote doctors, and they're really barbarians, they are doing 30 to 45 minute consultations and they are putting kids in surgery for irreversible damage. And you're starting to see the medical malpractice lawyers, you actually find them. A use for these lawyers that have done such damage to our country in the last three or four years. Finally, we found something useful for them to do to go like sue the crap out of all these companies and these transition plans. And so I don't know how you can be helpful except we need to raise the level of awareness because there are billions of dollars of judgments to be won, and as soon as these clinics are afraid that all of a sudden this 15 year old will come back eight years from then and they didn't have puberty, they can't have kids, they had a double mastectomy, they don't have breasts and they're on antidepressants the rest of their life, then all of a sudden that's gonna make them think twice about the butchering of our children. So that's, that, that's what we're gonna do.
California? <laughs> Just because California is such a disaster when it comes to the culture war, what's the one thing that you can give to this room to take so that we can fight back? Can I build on something? That's what right, my rabbi said. We do whatever. You're the great one, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Great big one, I think, right now. <laughs> anyway, so I have this book out called The Democrat Party Hates America. They do. Oh, no. And I'm walking to this. That title of the book, you go into a retail store today, it's in the back. We've gone to several Barnes and Nobles, they haven't even brought it out from the back. We complained to Barnes and Nobles, they said it's local decision making. <laughs> My wife went into the local Barnes and Noble, didn't identify herself, and said, have you ever heard of this book? It's the number one book in America. Manager says no. Have you ever heard of the author? Manager says no. I've sold hundreds of thousands of books for Barnes and Noble. She presses them, he goes in the back, comes out with seven books. He said they just arrived. Three days ago. <laughs> it's the title of the book. The book's 400 pages long, with 65 pages of footnotes, and talking about the Democrat Party, and eugenics, and slavery, and segregation, and poll taxes. You can't name a single Republican that ever supported any of that. Not one. The progressive era that was advancing eugenics against what they call idiots, imbeciles, and blacks. Because they want a more perfect society, you gotta weed out the imperfect people. Nothing is said about this. You look at, I said, let me take on FDR. I can't do it all here, but I wanna make a point. FDR, 1940, a bill hits his desk, bipartisan bill, a federal law crime against lynching black people. He wouldn't sign it, which is why Joe Lewis, the great boxer, got up and said, I will never vote Democrat again. And why didn't he do it? He was running for an unprecedented third term. He didn't want to lose the South. That chapter in the book, to me, is the most powerful chapter in the book. And I'm doing everything humanly possible to get the information in that chapter to as many human beings as possible particularly in the black community. One more. Lyndon Johnson, he didn't have an epiphany. Suddenly so became this great civil rights leader. Every single civil rights bill since the end of the Civil War was supported by and promoted by Republicans. Democrats opposed every single one, even when he was president. 1957. Dwight Eisenhower has a major civil rights bill on his desk. Lyndon Johnson, the majority leader of the Democrats in the Senate, goes to Eisenhower and says, I'm gonna kill your bill unless you take the teeth out of that bill. You take the enforcement mechanism out of that bill, I'll stop my guys, meaning the Southern segregationists, from filibustering it, because they filibuster every single civil rights bill. Eisenhower was furious. Three, four months pass. His staff says, we can't get it if you don't do it. He agrees to it, he's disgusted. Lyndon Johnson gets that passed. He takes credit for being a civil rights leader in 1957. His biographer says he did it because he wanted to run for president. My point here is that it's very, very important, whether it's California with Newsom, who gets away with murder, and his record, and he's, done, he's got the slick hair, he's got the Bill Clinton movements and all the rest of it, he destroyed San Francisco, he's destroyed California. Ideas have consequences and facts matter. And you get this information to people. I do us, I do these gentlemen, in our own way, not literally, but it's the Thomas Paines to get the message out there as to many fellow human beings as we possibly can. The Democrat Party writes our history. It's rewriting our history. We have to take it back. There are tens of millions of us. We talk about, we need to do this, we need to do that. I get callers who say that, and I always say, no, no, we don't need to do anything. What are you going to do? We need to do means nobody's going to do anything. 
Inform yourselves. Get the ideas. Get the facts. Repeat them at the dinner table, the breakfast table. Repeat them when you go out among the community and explain what a diabolical entity this is, where its ideology comes from. You don't find, Dennis, a huge base of secularism within the Republican Party. If you're an evangelical Christian, you're an Orthodox Jew, whatever you are, you tend to be Republican. And by the way, I'm not even a fan for most of what the Republican Party does these days. That's beside the point. The Republican Party is a political party. You can have Quislings, you can have leaders, whatever. The Democrat Party, it's a political party, but it's an autocratic party. When it runs and it wins, it's how to change the entire institution of this nation. The Republican Party wouldn't know how to change the entire institution of this nation, and that's okay. They want to change the voting system, get rid of the electoral college, get rid of citizenship, the border's wide open, they want to take over the courts, hack the Supreme Court, they want to do all these things. I finished writing this book, and that's why I came up with the title, The Democrat Party Hates America. What am I supposed to say, the Democrat Party Loves America? <laughs> Try writing that book. <laughs> My point to you is, roundabout, you're going to have trouble finding that book in a retail store. It's really quite shocking. You'll find any other book with the F word on it and everything else. Say that again? The, the gender queer book. Yes. I don't even say that stuff. I think it's a chart. But you understand what I mean. All right. I'm sorry. There you Thank go. you, Brandon. Well, I'll just keep it very simple. I think the gentleman here made a lot of incredible points. My, my thought is that you need to stay fight or leave. You can't be in the middle. You can't be complacent. You're wasting time. You're destroying the state. So if you want to leave, you should leave the state and go have fun and enjoy all the other beautiful states in this country. But if you do stay, you need to fight. Yeah. And fighting is going to take a, a period of time. It's not no overnight success. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme. Because it didn't take overnight for all of this to happen. So you have to methodically start by teaching your children, by focusing on your family. A lot of times you see people go out and they put the signs up and they become activists for all of these things in the world, but they don't, they forget about their own family. You need to be an activist in your home first. Teach your children to be conservative. Find ways to be innovative in the conservative movement. I saw the debate, in, uh, not debate, but it was on the, on the debate stage at the presidential debate. And I think Nikki Haley was bashing TikTok. Now, I will say this as a young guy that's on TikTok, not because I want to be, it's because I have to be. You have to understand the landscape. I wish that I didn't have to go on TikTok and deal with none of these social media platforms. But you know what? The young people are there. And they're getting brainwashed by other things. And so you have to be innovative and you have to be on these platforms. Now, I'm not saying every single person in the room, right? But what I'm saying, do your part. Be active. Teach the next generation. And if you do that while you're here, I think we can make a difference. This thing can flip around. It can. People get sick enough, they're going to change. But you have to be a part of that change. So, Brandon, I think we do not TikTok, though, by the way. Brandon, TikTok, use a burner phone. You read the policies of TikTok, they have access to every single keystroke, your camera, your microphone, everything. I use a burner phone for my TikTok so I can reach the people, right? Don't ask Brad how he knows a different phone. phone. <laughs> uh, we want to turn the topics down to the state of California. Uh, some of the biggest news right now is, of course, Senator Feinstein uh, has died. Flags are half staff out there. She served this, this state a long time. Towards the end, boy, she did a lot to damage uh, us in the country. but. Uh, this is not a unique idea, and Charlie, I want to ask you. Um, what do the Democrats do now? There is ideas floating around that they can make Kamala an offer she can't refuse because she's not going to want to go willingly. Make her a senator in California, and lo and behold, Mark Levin, your friend Gavin Newsom, can swoop on in and become vice president, and Lord knows what happens next. Charlie, what do you think about the Feinstein situation? Is that scenario where they, they even have the cojones to, to run a move like that? Yeah, there's, you're going to learn a lot about the Democrats' panic for 2024 
based on how they're going to fill this Senate seat. It's actually going to be a big tell. Um, I know we'll get into this in the 2024 segment, but 2023 didn't go exactly as planned for the Democrats. That doesn't mean we're necessarily going to win next November, but they thought Trump was going to be in a very, very contentious primary. It's a blowout. There is no primary. The Secretary of Commerce debate at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation. You hear what I said? None of those people are even going to be vice president, let alone Department of Interior. What a disgrace that whole thing was, by the way. I mean, that was really an absolute disgrace. You couldn't even hear what they were saying. They were talking over one another. Um, second thing is they thought that these indictments against Trump were really going to hurt him. No, actually, it made his base even stronger, and it's expanded his appeal. Third thing, you're going to laugh, is they thought that Joe Biden was... They, they, <laughs> They can't believe how unpopular he actually is. Um, almost to the place where they can't chase enough ballots and do enough crookedness in Maricopa County to make up for it. So all these dynamics are coming in play. The question is, do you try to not have Joe Biden run? They would love that. What I mean they, the oligarchs, Lorene Powell Jobs, George Soros, Reed Hoffman, Barack Obama, Valerie Jarrett, the people that are actually in charge. Joe Biden's not in charge. And but it's a lot easier said than done. So then your backup candidate is actually worse than your candidate, Pamela Harris. Yeah. And then do you open it up for a primary? Because, you know, the party of democracy, they don't like voting. So, by the way, every time you hear democracy, just replace with oligarchy, that's exactly what they mean. And I'll prove it to you. Our oligarchy is under attack like never before. Our oligarchy is so fragile. They don't mean democracy, they mean oligarchy, which is a ruler of, ruling of the few, ruling of the elite. And so you're gonna be able to tell a lot. Gavin Newsom is definitely getting phone calls from the masters of the universe. And he said he's gonna have to do affirmative action pick, right? A Katanji Brown Jackson style. So he has to you know, pick a black woman, I think he said, which um, you know, narrows it down. He could go Karen Bass, but she has her new gig, so that's not gonna happen. Uh, could go Meghan Markle, which um, <laughs> I'm telling you, we're here first. Could be Meghan Markle. Um, I seriously hear Oprah all the time. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it could be Oprah, um, which would be interesting. Um, so no way on the Kamala play. No, I'm not saying no way. I'm saying that the, the Democrats are not in a comfortable place. They thought that Trump would be dead to rights in a five-point race against Ron DeSantis. They thought the media was ready to slobber over a very bloody Republican primary. They thought Trump would be in wounded animal uh, posture in the corner and not his best. It's the opposite. Trump is looking far more presidential than anybody else running for this president. He is on message, he's focused, the base is behind him. He's winning over low propensity voters in every single one of the polls and Republicans are starting to come behind more early voting and ballot chasing in the states that matter. So you're act the true Democrat primary is going to be who's going to fill the Senate seat. If they do, it's very unlikely, but if they do the Kamala Harris thing, then that means they're going to try to go for Joe next. So um, we'll see what happens. But Gavin, it's not going to be Gavin Newsom's decision. It will be the um, it will be the Cabal's decision, and you'll find out pretty soon. I don't know. I mean, it just seems odd that she would want to go back because you still have to imagine her ego is still a She could still be fired. She could still be fired. All right, so far, we have, I don't know, anybody in the room know about our DA, George Gascon? Yeah. Ricky Ricardo! Ricky Ricardo, thank you. <laughs> so George Gascon, not so popular around here, but he is the DA, and he enraged us again last week. We had a sheriff's deputy who was assassinated in his cruiser, uh, on duty by an individual who was arrested and Gascon said that he would go out and go after him with the fullest extent of the law. Well, he lied. He did not make it a death penalty case. It's a life without parole case. Knowing that at the same time he is making this pledge that he's going to put him in jail for, li for life without parole, that he is working on a bill to give parole to people who are in jail with the sentence of life without parole. I mean, this guy is an absolute disaster. And he is a liar, but he's got George Soros' money behind him. So, Mark, do you think people are waking up? We see some, some glimmers of hope in San Francisco and in Oakland. But do you think George Soros has the power that he did a few years ago when Gascon was elected? See, I'm not as optimistic as everybody else. That's why I asked you. <laughs> this is why you and I get along so well. You know, you know, a new Cambridge once said to me, I'm a Reagan optimist. 
I said, I'm a Reagan realist. This is a one-party state. You're not going to win anything on the ballot. They've changed the election laws to make sure you won't win anything on the ballot. They have super majorities in both houses to make sure they have a stranglehold on legislation. The only person in the state who has the power to do something about this is the governor. The governor didn't bring out the National Guard. You know, when my wife and I were leaving the fantastic LAX airport and driving through two hours to move 30, what, 20 miles, I said to her, the most beautiful state in the country. When I was young, everybody wanted to come to California. Reagan's California, the paradise, where taxes were low, regulations were low, law and order ruled. It wasn't a fantasy land, but it was really as good as it gets. People wanted to enjoy the weather, the scenery, really invest in this state because you were welcome. They destroyed all that, and they're building their own paradise, which of course is hell on earth. We have to be realistic about what can and cannot be done. The governor has the power, not the president, not Congress. The governor has the power to take these cities back. What can the governor do? Well, what did the governor Reagan do? So first, he would send in the state police. Then he would send in the National Guard. He would tell them not to use deadly force. And they tried to burn down the administration building, one of the college campuses. The National Guard said, if we don't use deadly force, we can't stop them. He said, do whatever you have to do. That campus belongs to the people of the state and not to these rioters and Marxists. You say that today, there's something wrong with you. <coughs> I will give you a little look at hope. Philadelphia, you saw what happened there, which happens in LA a lot. <coughs> Where through social media, they literally had 100 people storm these floors. Ten minutes wiped them out. The Philadelphia police, I honestly believe it, I grew up in Philly, are among the greatest, it's among the greatest police in the country. And when let to do their job, they are the hardest hard asses in the country. <clears throat> I can tell you this, it's the truth. The police chief there who's an African American, he put his foot down. He said, We're gonna track these people down, they're gonna pay a price for this. The mayor who's lived really couldn't say anything at that point because the people were disgusted. The DA is a Soros DA, it's like burners out and everything, but they rounded up 60 of the 